Gary, once again, thanks for the response. Um, okay, so we sort of have established, at least for the purposes of this discussion, that it may be possible to create one's own internal positive value state. In other words, um, I may be able to actually sort of create my own positivity. Uh, it looks to me as though a lot of the negativity is self-created, then why shouldn't the positivity be self-created as well? And if that's the case, can't we synthesize it? It seems a rational thing. We synthesize the bad states a lot by, you know, making errors in our thinking. Um, or whatever other term you want to use for a sort of volition that leads to a negative value state. If that's you don't like the word error, then okay, that, it's that kind of thinking that I refer to. Um, so, we have <clears throat> the means. <laughs> this sounds really easy, but it ain't, obviously. I'm just sort of, you know, we're talking hypotheticals here. We have the means now to create value in our own existence. Positive value. Um, this takes a lifetime, if you ask me, to master, and I'm sure there are plenty of people that never learn to do it, and that's a tragedy, but I guess that's just the way the world is. Um, now, we've fixed the internal mechanism, or at least we've uh, opened the door to it being fixed, or not even just fixed, but made into something positive. Uh, to turn our existence into, I won't say chasing carrots as opposed to dodging sticks, because again, that's the the metaphor is, I would say, flawed. Because ideally, we should have positive value states that aren't contingent upon any desires external. But let's just say that we've figured out how to create a positive state that is not contingent upon external reality. Okay. What about the external reality itself? Well, um, this came up before. What I would say is, okay, just to, again, avoid the stick of guilt, because, again, the stick of guilt doesn't make me a good person. Is it possible to do good in the world. <laughs> That's a tough one. I tend to go with Socrates, and, and this kind of is a bit deterministic of me, but deterministic in a, I would say, a moral sense, that it's it may be impossible to know what is right and still do what is wrong. In other words, we have an innate sense of what is right, or at least <laughs> we want to do what's right. Um, and that is important in and of itself. What do we want to do? Do we want to create negative value states? Um, I don't think so. I don't think that we actually want to create negative value states in other people, because that creates desires in them, which they need to then act out on us, which screws up our ability to affect our own inner value states. Um, creating a negative value state in someone else is probably going to create a hunger. A hunger which they will see us, potentially, as the food, <laughs> as it were, for that hunger. Um, so, yes, we have kind of a, an obligation even to ourselves to be moral, to be good, or tr to attempt in as much as it's possible to if not create positive value states for other people, which may not be possible, I don't know. I haven't given that an enormous amount of thought. But at least to minimize our negative impact. Now again, to avoid the guilt trap in all of that, I would say we have to have a clear idea as to what constitutes um, our obligation to the outside world and what the limits of that obligation are. Guilt tends to leave it open-ended. You'll never meet the obligations demanded of you. Um, you'll never be good enough. That's Again, that's the voice of guilt. But if you have achievable aims, if you have 
sort of a game plan, if you want to use that metaphor, where you put, you create more positive in the world than negative, although I don't, I think positive is kind of a, a misleading term. I would say perhaps if I create less potential for negative and more circumstance in which positive can flourish or other people can then um, make their own positive value states, uh, then you will have met the, your obligations to the outside world. See, in my model, I'm ultimately responsible for my own positive value state, because if I can create it and I don't, then presumably it's because I have made some sort of fundamental error that nobody else can make for me. No one else can make the error that leads to me being in a negative value state. I have to make that error. So if nobody else can make the error for me, nobody else can fix the error for me. Because I'm making the error. I'm the one that has to stop uh, thinking or doing things that create a negative value state for myself. It's an experience thing. It's I'm on the receiving end of experiences. I'm having experiences, or perhaps I am experiences, uh, that are of a positive or a negative value. And these experiences are, in a large part, of my own creation, or at least, perhaps, I guess, a decisive part of my own creation. So if I'm in a negative state, then it's within my grasp to move to a positive value state. So I have to assume that it works that way for everyone else. So I can't create someone's positive value state, but I might be able to prevent the flourishing of conditions that detract from their own ability to create their own positive value states. And if you ask me, that is the limit of my obligation to the world. Um, it's not a question of there, I've done what I can and now I can be lazy. It's also, it looks to me as though that's a reasonable limit of what is achievable. Um, there doesn't seem to be any cap on the amount of negative one can do in the world. Um, but I would assume that there is. Now, there's also something of a cap due to our own finite nature of the amount of positive I can do in this world. How much can I do as me in this world to allow other people's positive value states to flourish. There is a limit to it. I am a limited human being. I have a finite duration. I have a finite nature. So there must be finitude to what I am expected to do. Um, if I'm a finite being and I have an infinite expectation, or at least an open-ended expe expectation, that's not reasonable or logical or even sane, if you ask me. But a lot of sort of religious-based guilt or a lot of existential guilt is um, sort of open-ended expectation upon the person. There's always something else you can do, and you're, just, you're on this weary treadmill of attempting to do everything that you possibly can, um, which I think is pointless. And trying to sort of, you know, change the world... Um, in a certain in a certain sense is what will lead to guilt and again it's sort of an egotistical sort of thing you're sort of saying I'm actually a superman here I'm I'm I actually have the capacity to do an unlimited amount of guilt uh, I'm sorry an unlimited amount of good um, I think I actually do or I've convinced myself that I do and then when I don't live up to that I feel guilty because I'm not trying hard enough you're not trying you know, that's uh, something that every person that's gone through the Catholic education system knows. It's usually somebody wearing a cassock that says that to you. You're not trying. 
<laughs> you're uh, morally lazy or whatever. Okay, then I'll have to try harder. Yeah, sure. And, and that just keeps going. You have to have limits on what is um, what is expected of you in terms of your ability to um, to uh, create conditions for positive value states among others. That's all that I think that can be reasonably expected because I'm only reasonably expected to create my own positive value states. The only thing I can reasonably expect other people to do is to leave me alone or not um, deliberately interfere with my capacity to create positive value states. That's all that they owe me. As you say, that's a vexed point. Where does this uh, where does this start and finish? It's not by any means clear. Um, but I think at least the recognition that 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 there is such a, a a hypothetical point is something to work with. Um, I'm I'm finite. I have finite obligations to the world around me because you again, finite being infinite obligation, crazy can't meet that. So you've got an impossible uh, equation here. Um, there was a movie that I watched a long time ago uh, where there was um, a Jewish fellow living in. Uh, in the Austro-Hungarian Empire around the turn of the century, and he sort of said, um, you know, as you know, I, in Jewish literature you often have this sort of obsession with guilt and what are my obligations to the world and to God and to my family and to my people, if you want. Um, and the fellow's name was Ignaz Zonenschein. I remember that because I liked his name, Ignatius Sunshine. Um, and he said, well, I'll tell you what. I believe my obligations are. My obligations, and I can only be held to account for um, these obligations. I can only be Ignaz Zonenschein. That's all I can be expected to be, and that's all that I can reasonably ju be judged for. I can only be judged, and I can only expect um, what is reasonable to expect from Ignaz Zonenschein. Now, that's interesting. That's kind of the same thing. And it's... He's only Ignaz Zonenschein. He's a guy living in the margins of a now extinct empire a hundred years ago, a hundred plus years ago. Um, what could he reasonably have been expected to do? And what could he do to meet whatever obligations are inherent um, in being only Ignaz Zonenschein. That's all that could possibly be expected of him, um, was the obligations that are inherent in his finite nature. <laughs>